So I'm so excited to finally be making this video. When I tell you guys I've been planning on making this for months, I'm not lying. Um, but it's funny because once you manifest everything that you want, um, you kind of just forget about everything else. So I definitely wasn't updating this channel or anything because basically you guys saw the beginning steps of what I was making for myself and then I just made that basically my life and um, yeah, I just got caught up in actually living what I was calling into fruition. And when I tell you guys that I literally manifested everything that I wanted, um, you know, just over this past last year, it really happened. And so I wrote down some notes because for this video, I just, um, I want to get straight to it and tell you most of the steps that I used. And then in other videos, we'll like dive deeper into what that really looked like. But, um, basically just giving you the blueprint. Um, and to start this off, I want to say that um, I did not have really any romantic leads or interests during this time when this happened. I was in a pretty low place um, in my life with my finances, with my relationships. And so um, when you're starting from like the bottom, it's really easy to get into like shadow work and where you went wrong. And so um, this is basically my story from going from you know basically as bad down and low down as you get to actually making something happen um so some of you might be in a better place than i was when you're starting this journey and things might manifest pretty quickly for you um especially if you already have like if you're already dating or if you already have an idea of who you're interested in um but for me i just um i had people around me who were maybe interested in me but not people that i thought would make good partners and so um my love life was like dry as hell <laughs> And when I had started dating earlier last year, like in February, um, you know, one of the dates just went like terribly wrong. I talked about it a little bit um, on my other channel, but it kind of scared me like from dating. And so I actually didn't date for like the next couple months, not a couple months, like a few months, <laughs> like five to six months because of that one experience. Um, and so it was during that time that I started manifesting. So let's see, just get into it. Um, so just letting you guys know where I was starting from, um, basically from scratch with this. Um, so number one was I started to look at my birth chart and I used the different transits to help set my intentions. And um, this was really interesting because there's gonna be times in the year where you're going to have new moons and full moons in things like your fifth house, which is the house of dating and hobbies and, you know, flirting, you know, romantic interests like that. And then you'll have new moons and full moons in maybe your seventh house of long-term relationships, um, not just relationships that are romantic, but ones with like your family and friends. Um, and you might even have uh, different transits. Uh, what's another one? Not, you just don't want to look at the five and seven um, when it's on your ascendant. Oh gosh, what's happening? When there's new moons or full moons on your ascendant, that also brings attention to you. And so, you know, there's so many different times throughout the year. For everyone, it's going to be different. For some people, it might be transiting like your fifth house, like let's say in like October or November. For other people, you could be getting seventh house stuff happening in like January. Um, it's going to be completely different. So this is where you have to know your birth chart. And if you guys need help with that, then obviously just reach out. But um, that really is what set me up is when I started looking at that. Um, and then I started um, trying to see like where there were different transits in Venus that affected my like natal Venus and things like that. And then I would use those days um, to you know set intentions or work with things. Um, when I find that it's like um, you'll find that like maybe Venus is trining your natal Venus for these days, and so you might be really lucky in love. Um, I never really had anything crazy pop out during those days, but at the same time, I wasn't actively like going on dates, um, but I would still use those days to set intention. So for some people, um, if you see something like that, like, oh my gosh, Venus is going to be um, on my ascendant, or it's going to be doing this or that, um, or even Jupiter, you use Jupiter too. Hopefully you guys know what sign your Venus is in. And so when it's that season, so it could be Leo season, if you have a Leo Venus or Capricorn season, then obviously this brings a lot more attention to you. So going out on dates and working your magic is really important but um like i said sometimes for me like um if i would like go on a date this is like years ago nothing <clears throat> like on those specific days would ever happen i've found 
more success in planting seeds around that time and then kind of forgetting about them and then things growing from there. So don't put too much emphasis or freak out too much about, oh my gosh, I have from this date to this date to make this happen um, because that'll also slow down your manifestation and bringing these to you. And sorry guys, if you hear little babies, we have a lot of family members in town right now and a newborn is a part of that. So um, don't get too worked up about that. Don't put the pressure on it. For me, I did not notice that like the love of my life walked in, you know, during that date that it said I would be most lucky in love. Like I just did not find that to be true. Um, but you still use those dates and those times to bring in things and to set intentions. Though technically you can start manifesting at any time. It's just when you're using what's going on in the astrology at the same time, it brings it in faster. Keep that in mind um mostly like you looking at the birth chart in the different times of the year will help to plant the seeds there's still work that you can do even if let's say right now things are transiting in like your second house of like money and business um it doesn't mean that you can't still work on your love life there's different things that you can do which i'll get to um other things that i worked on um so this was pretty funny and i found this a couple weeks ago when i was going through my old text messages because i got a new phone and basically i was texting myself so on your phone i know if you have apple you can do this basically you can just like text yourself have a whole conversation with yourself <laughs> and so what i would do is text myself good morning and um you know good night i love you um and even just like sweet little things that i not only hope to say to someone but also hoped to receive from someone so it's so funny because you're sending it in like a way you would send this to someone that you're in a very loving relationship with and at the same time you're receiving this from yourself and so i would do that all throughout the day um you know maybe like two at least two times a day because i'd like to do the good morning good night for me like that means a lot when your loved one is on your mind first thing in the morning so that's something i wanted to manifest so um now that i realize it what this technique does is you start living the reality in life that you want now and it's usually when you start taking action and making it happen um eventually you just like into it it's really crazy it's really crazy um so just setting your intentions like you know that that's great and all but you also have to take some type of action so if you want someone in the future to be like that um if you then you kind of have to start that just yourself and get into that vibration i think that's what ha actually happened i think i got into that vibration of you know sending kind of you know sappy things that were heartfelt but like that i meant even though i was just sending it to myself it sounds really stupid guys but that's what i did one thing that i chose to do was um a little bit of shadow work and um basically shadow work to me is just when you're looking at the things about yourself that you do intentionally or unintentionally that hold yourself back so sometimes this is like subconscious stuff and it could you know basically be from past relationships with our friends our family or exes and um it's these negative things that you kind of carry with you regarding love. So what I did was I started looking at um, my relationships in the past and how I acted in love, the things that I did. And then I started looking at when I'm going through like talking stages with people, um, even failed talking stages, uh, just my demeanor, what were the things that I would do. Um, I noticed a lot of times like if they weren't texting back quick enough, sometimes I would ignore them for like maybe the rest of the day or long periods of time. I wasn't communicating, um, you know, really how I felt at all. I basically was like trying to punish them by retreating um, because like my feelings were hurt, but I didn't want to talk about it, to, like make it better. It was really weird. And it's so funny because like I would do this over and over and over again in multiple talking phases and relationships and it's so funny because like it never paid off for me really like i was like why is this my go-to thing when it it like maybe only works 10 percent of the time like it it's so weird sometimes just feeling like a little vindictive and i just i had to really be honest with myself and look at not just what i felt was done wrong to me but where in this am I also like holding myself back and I found a lot of stuff and um, I'm afraid of vulnerability and a little bit of you know commitment because I think I'm gonna get hurt and um, you know I really had to get down in there and then 
once I like figured out what the heck it was I was doing and how it wasn't working for me, I think for some people even writing this down, almost making a story of what the relationship was, what you did in a relationship for each person would maybe help some people. So after I did that, started looking at my toxic relationship traits, um, I started looking at um, different uh, like couples therapy, like actual professionals <laughs> like uh, either um if they had books or if they had like podcasts things like that and i started to learn how to actually speak in a relationship um how to kind of like conduct myself when i was dating um because i, I just saw that sometimes i would put all of my eggs in one basket i put a lot of pressure on it and then i would let myself down every time i'd get really excited and so um i shared with you guys on this channel some of uh, i think it was john gray i shared with you guys his stuff and um some of these videos were like kind of long so like i said in the future i'll go back over some of this in detail but um he had some techniques that i started using and that actually freaking worked <laughs> um i've already mentioned it on this channel we'll go back into it later but um yeah i started looking at how to actually fix it and then um i started actually using some of those techniques even before i was actually dating anyone i started um practicing and that's something that was recommended like don't think that once you get in a relationship and it's like a whirlwind of emotions and you're excited and you're you're nervous and um i don't know it's just like this good fluttery feeling don't think that all of a sudden you're just gonna snap into like the things that you've been reading about or that you listen to on a podcast like honestly that's not how it works it's you have to like actively be ready to enforce it and you have to be maybe you have to basically start before like you have to it's just really important just like to start practicing it before you're getting into the relationship and it'll just really help you to basically make new habits and um that's what i did another thing that i did that you guys also see on this channel um is that i started looking at my um, chakras and i made a lot of videos on the chakras so guys really check those out um but i focused um i went through all of them but i really focused on the root chakra which can really get into the way of your divine feminine and actually attracting love to you um sacral which is huge for that because that's where we get our pleasure our kind of womanly glow it's funny because the root chakra is also like security that we feel like um security from money and safety and having like a provider and being comfortable but root chakra is also like our fight our flight it's like what we do when we're just trying to survive and i noticed that in a lot of my relationships um they had me in survive mode not necessarily relax mode so root chakra even though it's not like the passionate sensuous sacral chakra or the loving and divine heart chakra it's still really important to help balance that out because a lot of our negative energy and even being a little aggressive when we're in talking stages and dating people stem from down there so root chakra i are did, I worked on that um, and some of the shadow work through that and some things that had happened to me. And obviously sacral, um, which is basically your womb area and um, that lovely color of orange. And um, that obviously really helps because that's like the feel good womanly vibes. And that's what um, a lot of people just find so nurturing and you know soft and attractive about us. So I really, really you know, spent some time there, but just understand that that's not the most important one because the other ones can totally fuck this up um and then of course i did root chakra because that helps with um just universal love and divine love and um there's so many different types of love guys and uh yeah so i worked on those and i talked a lot about them and went into detail like i said i also worked on like throat chakra stuff and third eye and you should really go through all your chakras when you're trying to balance them though i focused on all of them and um obviously i put an emphasis on some more than others and that really helped me and then this is where it gets kind of weird um and i heard about this technique um i don't even know when or a long time ago and i didn't even really understand that this was what i was doing but now that i'm looking over of how i made this happen um basically i uh, after i had done all of that i like i set those intentions and then like i forgot about it but um then i started looking into other things they manifest that really had nothing to do with love 
and I started taking actions towards making it happen. And so one of the things that you guys saw was astrocartography. I started looking at um, how the different lines that are on our birth chart and on the world map, you can find your Jupiter line, um, your Mercury line, your Venus line, and um, I was basically traveling to those places and trying to see if it was easier to manifest different things. Um, I was actually trying to manifest material things. They had nothing to do with love. So this really, really helped just to get my mind off of everything. So during this time, um, for some reason, now that I think about it, I wasn't really, um, when I was doing like all of that chakra work um, and learning how to speak in a relationship and using that in just like my daily life, like practicing and doing all that stuff, um, I really wasn't on like any dating apps to meet any people. Um, I wasn't going out places to meet people either, now that I think about it. <laughs> um, and so um, for a lot of you, um, you know, that that's really where like it's gonna like start. Um, because hmm. I think about it when I met the person that um, you know I would soon be in a really not even really soon be in a relationship but would start dating seriously um, I met him only like uh, let, let me look okay give me a second guys I need to look and see when I was like posting these videos because um, that will help me to like just remember exactly how long until like I met him. Wow, um, so a lot of my chakra stuff was um, uploaded like in April and there's some stuff in May. I actually started talking to him um, sometime in May, but it was so weird. So like I said, I wasn't going out anywhere to meet people. I was pretty much focused on the whole traveling thing, the actual cartography thing and um, trying to get like what I needed. I needed a reliable vehicle. So I was trying to manifest that. And so, so less if I was working on just had nothing to do with relationships. Um, and I did not feel like I was ready to start dating yet. That was one of the biggest things. And so I wasn't trying, I think of it. Um, but basically it took about a little over a month until um, he and I started talking. And um, it was on like a dating website that I had used months before so it was in um may like the end of may early june that we started talking and i had given up on the dating website like in january like by the time it was february i was already done like with my dating experience and that's when i was making the youtube videos on what had happened which really was only one bad incident but I don't know, it was enough to just make me feel like, ugh, I'm not ready for this, I can't do this right now. And other stuff in my life was going on too. And so it was just too much at that time. So yeah, by the time like I was doing all the chakra stuff a month later, um, basically I just um, kind of messaged him on an app that I didn't even have a working profile for. So I had paid, um, you know, to be a part of this because like I wanted something that I you had to pay for because I hoped that that would weed out people who just wanted hookups. Of course you can meet people who want hookups anywhere even if they are paying like forty dollars or something um to be on a certain uh, dating website but basically i just wanted to pay for it because i thought that would help and so um obviously i wasn't still paying for this but they'd still email me pictures of people who were on the site and so his picture came up i tried messaging him because sometimes it'll give you a free message and then basically what they do is they cut it off so if the person like messages back you guys might have like three more exchanges and it'll be like okay renew your subscription so you can continue talking to them and so i um yeah just so crazy um but we started talking and no guys i didn't feel like this was like the person of my dreams like you're talking to someone online um basically uh, like one day i got upset and guess what i fell back I fell back into my fucking toxic traits of my failed talking experiences. Um, I remember it was like on a Saturday, I was I was coming down with something, like I was getting really, really sick. And I had texted him and I had said something about it. And then he read the message and he didn't text me back for like the rest of the day. Like at all. And I just felt like, wow, this person doesn't give a shit. Like, I'm sitting here listening to him talk about, uh, you know, his father had passed away a couple months prior and all this stuff. And I see something about, like, I'm feeling like death right now and couldn't even give, like, a, oh, I hope you feel better or anything. And so after that, I ghosted him. And so I ghosted him for, like, 
a month or so and um, basically the guys will and this happens with like my exes and people that like i'll ghost um basically like they'll just like watch all of your stories on your social media like even if like they're following you on like multiple apps um i used to think oh it means this person still cares or they're still interested but to be honest like sometimes like especially on like instagram it just kind of starts the next person's like uh it's not necessarily like a reel but like uh their story so it's like they're not necessarily going specifically to you just to watch it and so Honestly, it's not like a good sign that this person still cares or still like wondering what you're doing. Like they can actually watch you for like months or years and not say anything. Um, but you know, I just saw that he was still watching at least. But eventually one day I think he reached out uh, cause obviously I'm, I'm posting a lot and I'm traveling a lot and um, you know, I was having fun and he said something and I just decided to talk back to him i guess i don't know i can't remember guys but um just letting you guys know that um you could be manifesting stuff like this and it's like when you actually start to talk to someone out of the blue you might actually start to fall back into your old patterns which is exactly what i did i fell right back into my old patterns <laughs> and um and so uh, after we started talking again, um, it was like a good three months before we actually met in person. Again, guys, I felt like, it's so funny, I, I made up this story in my head that I could not be in a relationship or find love until I had these other material things fixed in my life. So until I had manifested the vehicle that I could rely on, didn't have to worry about it breaking down, then I could start dating. And so I did not want to meet him. So it took three months till I met him. And to be honest, I was not ready. So this was August of last year that we actually met. And um, like the end of August, like almost September. And um, yeah, like my other stuff that I was working on, I was still working on. You have to work hard, you have to start saving, you have to get things in order. And so I was in that mode. And basically he gave like almost like an ultimatum that um, he didn't think we should go any further because we're getting to know each other and become really close online. But it's like, we need to see where this will go, you know, in person. Like we need to see in person if there's something there or we're just kind of wasting our time. So, you know, basically to me to stop playing games and to actually make a date to see him. And so it was so funny because like when I got this um, message, I was out for brunch um, with my best friend and we were all dressed up and obviously I was posting and obviously you've seen the posts and um, this conversation came through and I'm like, I'm freaking out because I'm like, oh my God, I'm not ready for this. and. She was like, just do it. And so like I invited him to meet there because um, we had already eaten, she had to go back home. And so I was like, yeah, she's about to leave, you know, come have a drink with me. And um, yeah, he did. And <laughs> yeah, that was the beginning of, um, you know, taking things from online to in person. So um, this is just like, I don't know. I don't know why I'm getting into this story, but that's basically what happened. Let me see if there's anything else. Like I said, I will go into some of these things more into detail in other videos um, that I think you guys should know, but I didn't want this video to be too long. So I think for now, that basically is like a rough blueprint of what happened. Um, there were some times when we were talking that my insecurities would flare back up and i would get scared and i would want to push pull away i would not want to divulge things about myself because i was nervous about being um judged or i'd like want to go into ghost him mode just because i was upset instead of saying what was actually on my mind and so i remember very distinctly me telling myself you need to practice this now and that it's okay to be vulnerable if you get hurt, you get hurt. And it's just like, kind of like clicked at that moment. I was like committing to the possibility that this could go very wrong and that I could get hurt. And I just told myself I w at least was gonna do everything right. And if I looked like I was stupid or I was taking things too seriously, then I practiced and I did what I was supposed to do. And so um, once I you know, made that commitment to be vulnerable and to do things differently with him. Um, obviously things continued on. And so, yeah, it was like the end of August. So like, we'll just say September, we actually met. Um, by December, we made things official. Um, then it was like meeting family members, um, meeting friends that he had grown up with, uh, going to weddings together, um, meeting everyone at his work. 
um, you know, things, you know, we talked about what we, you know, just marriage. Um, and yeah, <laughs> uh, it, you know, turned serious, you know, this thing that I had manifested that I was not ready yet. And so um, just understand that you might make these like boundaries or like, you might obstruct your own manifestations from coming to you because you're so worried about the timing. I have to achieve this before this can happen. Once this happens, I'll, I'll feel more comfortable. And honestly, I don't know if we're ever really ready. So if something happens in love and it feels like you weren't ready or that happened too fast or it comes out of the blue, honestly, I think half the time that's what happens with relationships. Um, I've never had it happen where I was like, oh, I am ready for a boyfriend. And then all of a sudden I found a boyfriend. Usually it happened when I wasn't expecting it. Um, obviously I wanted it to happen, but I had no idea when it was gonna happen. I had no idea that that night would start things. And so just get it out of your head. That's gonna be like a specific season. Um, so I know I said things about, oh, look at your birth chart. Look at what months, what new moons or full moons are gonna be here or there. Or what Venus transits are gonna be happening. Yeah, for setting intentions. Um, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna meet like the love of your life at that time. Um, though sometimes during those transits, I did notice that is when we made things official. It was during my seventh is like everything was transiting in my seventh house that's when we made things official um i don't know at the time that he knew that things were like serious that he started falling for me actually happened um around the time of his birthday which i think things were transiting in my fifth house of dating and relationships so there were definitely some things that linked up but honestly these seeds were like I don't know, they were set at a different time. So you won't be able to completely get this like on the dot of when things are gonna happen. So this is really good that I'm thinking about this because in the future, I will know not to put too much, like like not to stress too much, put too much pressure on, oh my gosh, it's my time for dating. I have to go out and date right now. It's just like, um, be kind of casual with it. Don't get your hopes up put all your eggs in a basket, continue doing other things. And um, I will go into later how I kept my self-sabotaging ways, like um, what I did to not self-sabotage basically. <laughs> I don't know how to word that. Um, Cause there were some issues with me, um, you know, getting too worried about things going wrong and just messing up stuff. So we'll get into that later.